reverse engineering the algorithms. What does this have in common with this egg? Reverse engineering algorithms on YouTube and an egg. They have something in common. What is it? I'm Rob and I'm a YouTube product expert and I've been doing this for a long time. Okay. So what does an egg and reverse engineering the YouTube algorithms have in common? You might be surprised, but I think you'll find this extremely helpful. So hang on. All right. The first thing that I want to talk about, we're going to talk about a couple of things here, but the first thing is what we call correlation and causation. And you're gonna hear this all the time. And us humans, we just have this incredible desire to relate things as cause and effect, that one thing causes another. Correlation, causation, make sense? And you might see that says something like, drinking one glass of red wine a day, that the people that do this, people that drink one glass of red wine a day, live five years longer than people that don't. Well, that's great. That's just a study. Somebody did a study. They analyzed whatever they were analyzing, and they noticed that people that drink one glass of red wine live five years longer than people in the study that didn't. The problem is this doesn't mean drinking a glass of red wine caused the people to live five years longer. So that's the problem. So that doesn't mean if you're not a red wine drinker and you just say, hey, I'm going to start drinking a glass of red wine a day, I'm going to live five years longer. That's not what the study means. Correlation, the fact that two things happen together at the same time, doesn't mean that one actually caused the other. And we, we do this all the time. You know, we do this on YouTube. Um, one of my favorite examples is goes something like this. Um, let's make a uh, name. Tom lives at home with his parents, and he got his driver's license at 16, like most of us do here in the United States. Gets his driver's license at 16, graduates high school at 18. He's living at home with his parents. He goes to the local community college. He's completed one year of community college, so now he's, he's 19 years old. And in these three years, he's had two car accidents. And they've damaged his car pretty severely. So living at home, he's 19 years old, completed one year of community college, and he's already had two accidents that have total, you know, damaged his car. Now he's in his second year of community college and he's taking a statistics course. And the professor is up there and he's explaining how statistics works to the kids. And, well, kids, they're 19 years old. And he says that there's been a study done and 80% of automobile accidents happen within 20 miles of home. So Tom goes home and that weekend you're not going to believe this. <laughs> the very next weekend, he packs up all his belongings in his parents' house, loads them up into his car, and thankfully he hasn't had an accident in it recently, and he loads everything up in his car, and he rents an apartment 22 miles from home. And guess what? He never has another car accident in his life. <laughs> That's not how statistics works. The fact that he moved 22 miles from home has absolutely nothing with the car accidents. Make sense? <laughs> All right, here's one more. This one's really funny too. Every night when I go to bed with my clothes on, I wake up in the morning with a terrible headache. Hey, guess what? Sleeping in your clothes isn't causing the headache. They're correlated. You go to bed with your clothes on, you wake up with a headache, but the act of having your clothes on isn't what's causing the headache. It's the fact that you had too much to drink the night before. Again, so hopefully these little silly stories are validating the 
difference between correlation and causation. And this is really, really important to helping understand how the YouTube platform works and what it is that the algorithms are actually doing. Okay, number two. Number two, the algorithms are like this egg. So what I mean by that is in mathematics, most of us, the things that we typically deal with, what we learned in school and, and how math and that functions in the real world is, is we have what we call opposite operations or in math we often call them the identity operations. But it's just simple things like three times two equals six and we can go the opposite way. Six divided by two equals three. And it works, you know, in addition and subtraction too. Seven plus four equals 11. 11 minus four equals seven. We can go back and forth in both directions. And that's really important. The thing is that the algorithms, when you get up to artificial intelligence and the machine learning and what's going on and, and all these people that are attempting to reverse engineer the algorithms is it, it doesn't work that way. Not everything has an opposite reaction and that's where my, my egg analogy comes in is if you heat up your frying pan, your skillet, your griddle, and you crack open the egg and you cook it, you've now got a cooked egg. But no matter what you want to do, you can't go back the other way and uncook the egg. It, it's, it's a done deal, it's a one-way operation. And the algorithms, the artificial intelligence, the machine learning, it's so complex, there's so many variables involved that when you get the results of the algorithms and whether we're talking about ranking and whether they show up in suggested or browse or, or whatever algorithms you're thinking of, you can't dissect it and go back the other way. And there's a lot of people that attempt to do this and in my opinion, it's like cooking the egg, you can't uncook it. So you have to be really careful that when people say, we reversed engineered, and if you're getting this result, it's because of this that you did before. It, it's just too much information and far too complicated. Is that making sense? Realize, egg cooked, can't uncook it. So what's the point of all this? Who cares? What does this have to do with you creating videos? Um, oh, wow, and point three. See, I knew I couldn't stick to two. The other thing too that's really important in all of this, <laughs> and this really is important, <laughs> is that, <laughs> hang on, is the platform, the artificial intelligence with the machine learning, it's always changing. So. An example would be, you know, when you learn how to play chess, chess is played the same way today as it was a hundred years ago. You learn how to play football, sure, there might be some rule changes, but day to day, football's the same. You learn how to play poker or blackjack when you go to the casinos. It's basically the same today as it was years and years ago. Not so on the YouTube platform. Today is different than yesterday and it'll be different tomorrow. And we're seeing this all the time with all the, just when you think you got it figured out, who moved my cheese and now today it's different. You wake up in the morning and your views are up. Well, what happened? Why are my views up? You wake up three days later and your views are down. Well, what's going on? What does the, is the algorithm mad at me? What did YouTube change? And, and so that's the three things. So three, number one, Correlation is not causation. Number two, when you do one thing like cooking the egg, you can't always undo it and go back the other way. And then three, the platform is, is dynamic. It's, it's just in a constant state of, of recreating itself in flux. So now, what does this have to do with you? How does this impact you creating videos on YouTube? 
basically, you just have to make what you like to make and what your audience wants to see. And you just can't get caught up in all the, the dynamics of it. And then, you know, videos need to be 10 minutes long. Well, why do videos need to be 10 minutes long? Is there really a justified reason to that? Or is it this self-fulfilling issue that people are making videos 10 minutes long because if there are 10 and a half minutes long, you can now add a mid-roll. So now everybody's making videos 10 minutes long and videos that are 10 minutes long are performing better on the platform. Well, that's like the White House hurricane thing. It's because there's so many videos that are that long. Of course they're performing better. And so just don't stress. If you make three minute videos, great, make three minute videos. If that's what it takes to cover your material, don't worry that everybody's making 10 minute videos. You know, if, if you need to make 20 minute videos to get your point across, make 20 minute videos. Do what is necessary to share what you need to share with your audience. Wonderful. Subscribe and watch another video. My goal is helping you understand the YouTube platform and solve any problems that you have.